I'm Jerry Carroll, and this is uh, my audience for my speech on Sunday, November 2nd. Good afternoon. Wake up and smell the coffee. The next cup may just be what the doctor ordered. Through personal experience, illustration, careful medical research, and resulting statistical data, I'll present many benefits of drinking coffee. We'll discuss the following. The positive benefits of coffee known since its beginnings, the facts and myths over the years, and proven medical research. My intent is to show you that coffee drank within moderate limits, three to five cups a day, can be beneficial, contrary to public opinion. Coffee is actually a fruit, as documented in the Cyclopedia Britannica's article entitled Coffee. It tells us that coffee is a berry, inadvertently discovered by a goat herder named Cowdy, who in 850 AD actually saw his goats acting kind of excitedly. Then he tried the berry and found that he too had an infusion of energy. So the fruit is similar to a cherry in size and in color. It's covered with a thin film of sugary flesh, and as we peel away, we see the, the coffee bean or the fruit inside the seeds of the, of the coffee. Coffee crops, again, were born in Africa. They became the object of trade and commerce from country to country. And today, over one-third of the world's population enjoy coffee, either hot or cold, but not without its troubles. And you can see in the handout on the coffee production, the consumers, and the United States is towards the bottom of that. The Sovereign Trading Company's website states that the Muslim faith were the first to condemn the use of coffee as a stimulant, as their congregation was using coffee to stay awake during the long religious services. The Catholic Church was encouraged to ban the drink, but Pope Clement VII first asked for a sample. Upon drinking, he said, quote, This beverage is so delicious that it would be a sin to let any misbelievers drink it. Let's defeat Satan by blessing this beverage, which contains nothing objectionable to the Christians. So it's not just a refreshing drink, however. In the 1800s, many physicians called it a cure-off for many ailments and disease. Many European capital cities still have what they call coffee temples or coffee shops, especially in Italy. Personally speaking, for my own health and for my father who's 75 years old, we think that a few cups of coffee a day is just fine. The Encyclopedia Britannica also says that two coffees of economic significance are the Arabica bean, grown in Central and South America and the Caribbean islands, and the Robusto bean, grown in the African nations. Brazil is now the world's largest producer of coffee. The Arabica bean is the more flavorful of all the coffees as well. It was first known as medical use in AD 1000 by a, a physician known as Avicenna. The coffee was introduced to colonial life by the European colonies, the Dutch in Java, the French in Martinique and Antilles Islands, the English, Spanish, and Portuguese in the American colonies. The Hawaiian Islands started to produce in 1825. Coffee increases our alertness and boosts our concentration, as most of us know. But do you know it can also increase athletic performance levels? Uh, Dr. Roseanne Santos stated in the Revolutionary Drink for Pleasure and Health in 2007 that regular coffee intake increases performance at work and at school. It contains many natural ingredients, so therefore it's a natural food. It increases alertness and memory capacity and strengthens your mood and your thinking. She even suggests that students should, be, should drink more coffee instead of the, the, the coffees or the colas and the sugary drinks that they drink. They said it will also go to reduce obesity, depression, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and even alcoholism if we were trading coffee for the spirits. A WebMD article in January 2004 also agreed that increased sounds like performance, that two servings of coffee equals eight cups of a normal cola. But it's not just the caffeine. It's documented in reducing the risk of heart disease. In a study of more than 40,000 men and 80,000 women over a span of 18 to 24 years, in the Harvard School of Health report, Angela Hawk of USA Today reported in June 17, 2008, that coffee usage, as it increased, it reduced the risk of cardiovascular disease. Women in particular had a 25% lower risk of cardiovascular disease. Even decaf coffee lowered the rates than of non-coffee drinkers. <laughs> a Science Daily report from April of 2007 said that moderate coffee consumption also reduced the risk of Parkinson's disease, several cancers, and in 400 other studies over coffee and cancers throughout the years, it's been found to be a positive link to protective properties against colon cancer, rectal cancer, and liver cancer as well. The vitamins and nutrients in coffee also outweigh just the caffeine. There is magnesium, potassium, vitamin B3, antioxidants, and antibacterials. Mm. In fact, antibacterials found in coffee have been seen to increase and protect the enamel on our teeth as well. 
in a study from the Federation of American Studies for Experimental Biology, Dr. Coughlin said that recent findings have transformed the negative health myths of coffee and also validated the many health benefits. In conclusion, an unplanned discovery by common goat herders tending to his animals in Ethiopia leads to a natural fruit being grown and traded throughout the world. And now it's been acclaimed as a cure-all on some sides, but condemned as a drink of the devil on other sides. Yet today it's being rediscovered as a health drink for medicinal purposes. So I invite you to wake up and smell the coffee. The next cup just maybe with the doctor. Oh, yay! Oh, that was cool.